Amen. We do thank the Lord, amen, for another opportunity, amen, to come together around God's word. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he said the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So that tells me, as I often say, it tells me that if we're going to be a people that endure, we're going to have to be a people of the word. we got to stay in the word, y'all. We got to give the word final authority in our lives. We got to give the word first place in our life. We must let, we must allow nobody's opinion to be above God's word. Amen. People's opinion of you must never become your reality. Everybody entitled to their own opinion, but everybody ain't entitled to their own truth. Did you hear what I just said? We don't have our own truth. A lot of times we, we, we live in a world where people are saying, well, you have your truth and I have mine. That's not true. There's only one truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell me his name? Jesus. Jesus is not much. He doesn't just have the truth. He, he is the truth. truth. He is. He said, I am the way. The truth. The truth. like John 14, 6. He said, I am the way. So the way is not a path. The way is a person. <coughs> Hallelujah. The truth is not a philosophy. The truth is not something you study, really. The truth is somebody you meet. The purpose of the Bible, the purpose of the written word is to introduce you to the living word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus existed before the Bible. You know, John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. word. It didn't say in the beginning was the Bible. No. Y'all not hearing me yet. Right. He says, in the beginning was the word. word. And the word was with God. And the word what? was God. Watch this. And all things were made by him. Say him. 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 That's a personal pronoun. Referring to the word, you know, I learned in English literature that whenever you get, when you ever see a pronoun, you got to trace it back to its to its original what they call antecedent. Mm -hmm. So the subject matter is the word. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says all things were made by Him, that Him refers to the word. The word so right. therefore, the word is a person. Yes. Hallelujah. And that person is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus is not just the Son of God; He's also God the Son. Right. Amen. He ain't God. He says, I and my father, Joseph, that John, John 10, he said, I and my father are one. Hallelujah. So it begins with the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And that life is the light of men. Hallelujah. Then you jump down to that 14th verse in the first chapter of John. He says, and the word became flesh. Who's that talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Not the Bible. Jesus. Jesus. The Bible, hallelujah. The Bible did the, 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 the written word. Purpose for the written word is so that we might see Jesus and get an understanding of who he is, the living word. Because Jesus is inside of us. Did you know that? His spirit lives in you. When you got saved, when you said, Jesus, come into my heart, his spirit came in right then. And right now, the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of, of the Son, is on the inside of us. Hallelujah. And I give God praise. We're going to talk some more about that because that's a good study in and of itself. But I want you to join me as we're going to get ready to pray. But I want you to join me in the second chapter of Galatians. Praise the Lord. And we're going to go down to verse number 11. Hallelujah. Let's pause. Father, we thank you now for your word tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, give us the mind that David had. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. Father, in all things, we give your word preeminence. Tonight, Lord, by we, we on purpose and deliberately, Lord, we make your word final authority in our lives. Lord, as far as I'm concerned, your word is more real than my natural circumstances. Your word is more real than what I see with my eyes. Hallelujah. Lord, for, so I'm going to let my eyes leave my situation, and I'm going to focus on your revelation. Because your word has preeminence. Hallelujah. It is what you say it is. Doesn't matter what anybody think about it. Doesn't matter what anybody, how anybody feels about it. It is what you say it is. Now, Lord, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. We thank you for the healing virtue of Jesus right now, Lord. Touching my queen at home right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for touching her and raising her up, oh God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody else need to touch in this room tonight? Receive your healing right now. Hallelujah. Yes. Receive strength from God right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will be careful now to give you all the praise. Yes. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Everybody said? Amen. 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 All right, hallelujah. Go to the 11th verse of the second chapter 
of the book of Galatians. Now, when you get to the 11th verse, you notice uh, verses 1 through 10 deals with Paul in Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. Paul went ahead and Barnabas, along with Titus, and it may have been a few others. They went down to Jerusalem to the council, hallelujah, because there was, a, there was, a, there was seemingly a hotbed of contention. Those Judaizers were there, and they were telling people that if you really want to be saved, you got to mix the law in with grace. How do you know anything you mix in with the gospel, you weaken the gospel? Yes, all right. You get what you, you get what is called a dilution. Say dilute. Yeah. How do you know when you dilute the thing, you weaken it, yeah. right? So you don't add nothing to the gospel. Hallelujah. Jesus' cross don't need nothing added to it. Hallelujah. My counsel to you tonight is keep looking to that cross. Hallelujah. Keep looking to the blood. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed on Cal way back on Calvary. That blood that gives us strength from day to day, it never loses its power. See, amen. amen. So keep looking at that blood. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody cause you to cause your eyes to turn from the blood. Don't let anybody cause you to turn your eyes from the cross. Hallelujah. As somebody said, there's still a cross that bleeds, and there's still a Savior that redeems. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul had to go down to Jerusalem. And they had to try to hash out these things because these Judaizers had come in and they had caused them uproar. Let me tell you something, y'all. People can come in, if we're not careful, people can come in and cause an uproar. Because yeah. people, will, people will call, if you're not careful, people will cause you to start questioning what you believe. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important that we have Bible study. Why? So that you, so that you know what you believe, yes. yes, and you know why you believe it. Because you got all kind of religious voices. There are all kind of sounds being floated around. Amen. And one thing, when you, when you get familiar with the scripture, when you get familiar with the word, amen, you'll learn to recognize error when you hear it. You'll say, that, that ain't right. And the Spirit of God will say, no, don't, don't listen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. God will lead you and guide you in all truth. Amen. So now, now when we get to verse 11 then, the scene shifts. So now we have left Jerusalem and now we're in Syria. We're in Antioch. Hallelujah. It's almost like, uh, and, and God did that on purpose. It's like the church began in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, right? It began in Jerusalem where the Lord told them, don't depart, stay there till you be in due with power from on high. You read about that all through the book of Acts. They stayed in Jerusalem, and, they, and, and it was 120 of them in the upper room, and they tarried. And when the day of Pentecost fully came, all 120 of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave others. That was the birthday of the church. Hallelujah. And God did some tremendous things. And one day, Peter stood up on that day of Pentecost. I'm going fast. Stay with me, y'all. I'm going to go, but I hit a truckload. Don't get nervous. I'll give you the notes. Hallelujah. All right. So Peter, so Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, and he preached. And that it was under one sermon, 3,000 people got saved. Hallelujah. That's pretty good, isn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. So we, so we catapult on through the book, the early chapters of the book of Acts. We see in Acts 3 where the man at the beautiful gate got healed. Hallelujah. We see in Acts 4 where the church constantly met praying and they, and they broke bread and they had fellowship. <clears throat> Excuse me. And God did tremendous things through the church. We get to, and we get to, um, we get to um, Acts chapter 5. We read about Ananias and Sapphira. Hallelujah. Amen. They had conspired. Amen. To, to sell a piece of property and hold back part of the price. If you remember the teaching, the, the brief teaching I did on Ananias and Sapphira, we may take it back and take it through the book of Acts. But uh, anyway, we're going to take it through the whole Bible eventually. But, and, and the reason why I'm doing it this way, because uh, new believers, let me tell you some new believers, those of you that are really getting familiar with Scripture, um, don't spend a whole lot of time in the, in, in, in the Old Testament by itself. Because the Old Testament was written to us, but it wasn't written for us. Mm -hmm. Please understand that. Because mm -hmm. people are trying to put you back under the law. Right. And they're trying to say this, that, and other. But the Bible says in this same book of Galatians, we're going to see it when we get to the third chapter, that Christ has redeemed us mm -hmm. from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. So it's not about rules and regulations. Hallelujah. When you get into rules and regulations, that's when you put people back in religious bondage. Mm -hmm. So it's not about rules, it's not about a code of conduct, it's about walking in the Spirit. Because I promise you, amen, brothers and sisters, that if we walk in step with the Holy Spirit, He'll teach us how to behave. Amen. If we learn to listen to Him. Amen. If we follow His leading, He'll tell you, don't say that no more. Right. He'll tell you, don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. He'll say, you don't need to do that. Hallelujah. You need to stop doing that. Holy Ghost will tell you that. Hallelujah. 
All right, hallelujah. So in, so now we're in Antioch. Come on back to verse 11. <laughs> hallelujah. All right, verse 11. Paul got saved in Acts chapter 9. In verse 11, Peter, the scene shifts to Antioch, and Peter came to Antioch, and Peter did something that if, that if it had went unnoticed, if it had went unaddressed, it could have caused havoc in the church. Why? Because you understand, Peter was not just any old kind of guy. Peter was one of the original apostles. So if Peter's conduct, whatever something Peter did, we're going to read about it. I know you've already read it, but we're going to look at it together as a group here. There was something that Peter did that if he wasn't checked on it, it would have, it would have wrecked the church. It would have split the church. And the Lord told me, he, when I, as I was looking at this, he said, this is the spirit of division that comes and tries to divide a church, especially a thriving new covenant church, a church that has the move of the spirit, a church that God is positioning to do great things. There's always a spirit that will come and try to divide that. We must not be shocked about things that happen and people running their mouth and different stuff. That don't shock me at all. Because to me, watch this, to me that's not the evidence that we're doing something wrong. To me that's the evidence that we're doing something right. You must see the attack in it, and I, and I put on one of those one of those things I said. I tell you, I said the attack is evidence of the anointing. Anything God anoints has to be attacked, because the only way the anointing can show up, the anointing shows up in the midst of the attack. You understand? Just like things have to be tested before you can really determine the quality of it. Anything that hadn't been tested can't be trusted. Do you know how many cars the government wrecked and tore up before they released your car to the public? Did you know the rigorous, the rigorous tests that automobiles have to go through before they release them to the public? They take, they, 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 watch this, they, they, they take these things, we call them dummies. They put dummies in them cars. It has to be a dummy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it has to be a dummy that they put in those cars. And they run them in the walls and, and they drop stuff on them and they do all they, they, they on purpose they, they build this brand new automobile and then they take it out back on the on the on the on the course out there and they on purpose wreck it. Why? Why would you wreck a thousands of dollars automobile? Because there are safety tests that that vehicle has to pass before it's, re it's released to the general public. All right. Before God, before God releases you to his people, before we are released to minister to people, there's a litany of tests that we have to go through. I know we would rather not wish we didn't have to do it, but those that live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer persecution. We have to go through stuff. It's part, it's, it's, it's part, of, the, it's part of the process. And some of that stuff don't feel good, but I guarantee it's working for your good. So now here we are. We got Peter sometime after the Jerusalem Council. It doesn't really give us the time frame, but sometime afterward, you know, Paul came to see Peter. So Peter said, I'm going to return the favor. I'm going to go see Paul. So he came to Antioch. And he came to Antioch, the Bible says. Let's read it now. Hallelujah. He paused it, but when Peter was come to Antioch, Antioch, Syria, this is the city that God used to spearhead world evangelism. Mostly Paul's missionary journeys. Amen started at from Antioch. They didn't start from Jerusalem. They started from Antioch, which to me is important in and of itself. And, and I'll give you some thoughts on that as we go. Hallelujah. Peter came in and I paused it and I withstood him to his face. Paul said, I had to get in his face because he was to be blamed. There's something Peter did that caused Paul to get in his face and watch this. Paul didn't do it in private. He cut Peter in front of everybody. Normally you wouldn't do that, but sometimes when, when things are done publicly, you got to deal with them publicly. See, so, see, I'm always leery of people who want to try to ruin you publicly, but then they want to apologize in private. Right. <laughs> no, you need to stand before you need to stand before the church and apologize for that lie you told. Them. You did it publicly. You ought to apologize publicly. Church, I was wrong. I said such and such about my brother, and I want to publicly apologize. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Here's what Peter did. He says, for before, Paul said, for before, that certain came from James. Now, you know, James was in Jerusalem. James, you know, Peter, James, and John were, were, were Jesus' inner circle. You, you did know that, right? 
when Jesus did his earthly ministry before Jesus ascended, when he, after he rose from the dead and went back to glory, but when Jesus was on earth doing his earthly ministry, he had 12, 12 disciples, but he had three main ones. That was his inner circle. You know, we all got friends and associates, but then we got certain people that are really showing up close to us. So Peter, James, and John made up Jesus' inner circle. So when the scripture says that certain ones came from James, so now we're talking about people of reputation. That these are people of repute. These are people that, that normally you would hold in high regard. Peter was in Antioch. There was a group came from Jerusalem. They came to Antioch. They were Jews. Watch this. Let's read. Let's get the story here now. For before certain came from James, he that he referred to Peter. He did eat with the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But when they would come, he withdrew himself. Because some folks get act, go to acting funny right. when certain people come around. Yeah. Now we was cool before they got here. All of a sudden now they come and all of a sudden now you're getting funny acting. Mm -hmm. Watch this, hallelujah. Paul said that I got in his face about it because he was wrong. See, because before they came, he sat down and he ate. Hallelujah. Peter was sitting there eating. Glory to God. He was eating pork chop. He was eating ham. Come on. <laughs> Peter would tear them sausages up. See, that was something that Jews didn't eat. Right. But, but Peter, how, how do you know, now, now if, you, if you look in Acts chapter 10, you remember um, Peter, that there, was, there, was a, there was a couple of men came, uh, came from a man named Cornelius. Came from his house. Cornelius, the, the, the angel of the Lord appeared to Cornelius. Cornelius wasn't even saved. But an angel appeared. Don't tell me these angels can't appear to unsaved folks. They can, and they do. But an angel, you see this in Acts chapter 10, an angel appeared to Cornelius, because Cornelius was a good man, but he didn't know Jesus. That's some good folks, but they don't know Christ. Cornelius, he built, he, he, he himself, he, he, his, by his own personal efforts, he sponsored the building of a whole synagogue. He built a, he built a church by himself. He gave him the money to build it. And God, but now watch this. He gave money to build the church, but he wasn't saved. Wow. You'd be shocked at the people that's giving offerings every week, right. but they don't know Christ. Yeah, don't know. Lord have mercy. You'd be surprised at people that are doing good deeds. You got some folks that ain't saved. They live better lives than some saved. Yeah. Come on. Now, I don't say that to I, don't, I say that to our shame because nobody from the streets ought to live better than us. Yeah. Wow. But we all are works in progress, right? Yeah. But Cornelius was a good man. And, and, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Cornelius and told him to send to Joppa for a man named Simon Peter. Right? This was 10 years after the, Acts chapter 10 is 10 years after the day of Pentecost. So for the, so watch this. For the first 10 years of the church, Gentiles like us, who wouldn't even preach to? They thought that salvation was just for the Jews, the Jewish people only. For the first 10 years, right? So here we are, 10 years into the journey. The angel appears to Cornelius, tells him to send to Joppa, Simon Peter, to send for him to come, and when he comes, he's going to tell you how to, how to be saved. Well, why didn't the angel tell him how to get saved? I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to provoke things. Why didn't the angel, did, did you think the angel didn't know that Jesus was the Savior? The angel knew that. Why did he tell Cornelius? Here's why. I'm glad you asked. Here's why. <laughs> because it is not the job of angels to preach. Mm, all right. okay. God gave that assignment to men and women. He gave that assignment to mankind. Angels were not called to preach. Angels were not called to prophesy. What did I tell you? That tell you that you got a position. You got, you got something that angels can't claim. Let me blow your mind. You got a higher position than angels. When Jesus went to the cross, he didn't go to the cross for angels. He went to the cross for mankind. So that means that I got a song that angels can't sing. Hallelujah. When you look at Psalm 8, we, 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 that, that, that was their theme over in Scriven that night when we went over there. Psalm 8 is when, when David said, when I consider the works of your hands, when I consider how you made the sun, moon, and stars in the universe, when I consider the vastness of the, the power and the display and the, and, and the manifold wisdom of God, David said, when I behold all of that, then he asked the question in verse 8, what is man? That you're so mindful of him. God, you did all this, 
and you turn around and did all that, and you did all, you look at the creation. What is man? Yes. That you have crowned his head mm. with, with, with such glory and honor. Mm. It tells you that everything God did, he did with man in mind. Yes. Mm. Now, you don't understand how important you are to God. Yeah. Everything that God did, he did with us in mind. That means everything we do, we ought to do it with him in mind. Amen. Because we ought to reciprocate that love back to him. Hallelujah. What is man that you're so mindful of him? Or the son of man that you would visit him? Hallelujah. God has given us an exalted position about us. And one day we're going to even judge angels. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. Did you know right now there are angels being held in chains? You see this in the book of Jude. There are angels right now being held in chains in a place called Tartarus, which is the lowest, deepest, darkest part of hell. Angels are being held because of what they did, hallelujah, in Genesis chapter 6. What did they do in Genesis chapter 6? Angels, 400 of them, came down, hallelujah, and began to cohabitate with daughters of men. Some of y'all have heard that before. And they begin to, they begin to, angels begin to, begin to leave their first estate. Because angels are multi-dimensional beings. They can move in and out of realms. Yeah, yeah. This is why you can see somebody that looks like a man, but it could be an angel. That's right. mm -hmm. This is why the Bible tells us to be careful how we entertain That's strangers. Right. Yeah. Because sometimes you can entertain angels unawares. Right. Hebrews chapter 13. Did you read that before? Yeah. How, how can you entertain an angel unaware? Because he can't assume a human form. Mm -hmm. Because he's multi-dimensional being. Pastor Todd, that sounds like some science fiction stuff there. <laughs> but it's in your Bible. <laughs> I know that was an angel that saved me that night from getting killed when I was 16 years old. That was an angel of the Lord. Had to be. There's no other, there's no other, there, there, there is no other explanation for that. All right, hallelujah. So, <laughs> we have a position that they don't have. One day we're going to judge those angels that sin. We're going to judge those angels. Those angels, hallelujah. And angels have so much power. You know, one angel went through an Assyrian camp one night. One angel in one night slew, killed 185,000 men. Wow. One angel. God told, him, God told Israel, just be still. This battle ain't yours. You ain't got to fight. God sent one angel. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. One angel went through the Assyrian camp in one night. The next morning, 185,000 was dead. What kind of weapon do you use? I don't know. I'm just glad I don't know. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Angels are powerful beings. Yes. But you know what? As powerful as they are, they look at you with amazement. Yes. They look at you with amazement. God, you mean he went, Jesus, he went to the cross for them? Yes. He went for us. He never made an angel in his image. But guess who bears the image of God? God. He calls it I bear the image of God. The Omakio Day, as you like to say, the image of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are what God will look like if He had a body. That's amazing, isn't it? All right. I'm way over there. We get back over here. All right, so Peter was sitting there eating. He was enjoying. He was enjoying that bacon and egg sandwich. <laughs> he was enjoying himself. Hallelujah. Before these men came, before these people came from Jerusalem, before that, before that group came from James, Peter, see, you understand, Peter had been in Antioch for a while, right? And he had a, watch this, Peter had established a pattern of regularly eating with the Gentiles. I want you to see this. This is not just something he did for a day or two. He had a pattern. They would regularly eat together. And these people was used to hanging out with Peter. Because God had opened Peter's eyes that, that God said salvation is not just for the Jews. This is why God chose Peter to go to Cornelius' house. Acts chapter 10, verse 4 to 4. Peter said, while I yet preached, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard. And Gentiles start talking in tongues. And some of them start prophesying. Hallelujah. Peter said, I love the truth. I perceive that God is no respect of persons. Well, if God is not a respect of persons, why are we? Y'all can say what you want to say, but we still got our little prejudices. We still got our little, we still got our little hiccups, the little hang-ups. Even though we love God, but come on, we all are works and prophets. Don't judge Peter too bad because we got issues too. Yes, 
Say thank God for grace. Thank God. All right, so Peter had established a pattern of regular eating with the Gentiles. The Lord had taught Peter. In Mark, you see this in Mark chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. Don't write it down. You got the notes. If you don't have them, let me know. I'll make sure you got them. Actually, this is the, the Lord had taught Peter that, hey, it doesn't defile a man what go in. You're not a sinner because you ate a pork chop. Right. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. You ain't lost because you ate a bacon sandwich. Ooh, thank God for that. Hallelujah. That ain't what messed you up. It's the stuff that come out of you. Not, not, not the food that go in. The Bible says meat for the belly and belly for the meat. So it, ain't not, it ain't about what you eat. Hallelujah. You can't eat your way into hell. Aren't you glad about that? If I can eat my way into heaven, I got it down. I'm the biggest fella in the house. Hallelujah. If, I can eat, if this thing was done by eating, I got a corner on the market. That's what we all use as much as I do. You just wear it there. Watch this. Hallelujah. So Peter, so Peter, what a man eats doesn't defile him. Also in Acts chapter 10, we told you about Peter and Cornelius. God had told Peter, remember when Peter was going to go up and pray, but he fell into a trance? He fell into, Peter got in his spirit, and he saw that sheep come down. And what was inside that sheep? All kind of food. Pete saw pork chop. He saw pork chop running right next to Sue. He saw he saw chicken. He saw cows. He saw chickens. Come on. He saw he saw he saw deer hopping, deer running. Hallelujah. If anything you could imagine to eat, he saw it. And then the Holy Ghost said, Peter, rise up, slay and eat. Pete went back to that old Judas and said, oh no. Ain't no swine ever touched these lips. That stuff unclean. His mind went back to Leviticus chapter 11. I know folks today in church right now, they still go to Leviticus 11. I heard a man tell, I heard a man on the radio one day say, his wife, bet not put no ham hock in his beans. I said, she can put them in mine. Put them in there, girl. I want to smoke, smoke, that, smoke, that bone, smoke, that mouth. Put it in there. Uh, and I put it in the feast of tabernacles. Anyway, she, he, he, but, but I don't want that swine touching my beans. How do you know he was still neck deep in law? He, 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 was, he, was, he was messed up. That's Ananias and Sapphira. And when you preach that, people start falling dead. People start dying because you're holding back part of the price. Hallelujah. You're holding, you're holding the price. Now, Jesus paid the price. Peter E. That stipulation is gone. Hallelujah. It was never, it was never meant to save you anyhow. God never gave the law to save you. Only thing the law does is show you where you're wrong. That's all the law can do. It can't save you. The law can't change your heart. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. So Pete, that the Lord had taught him about direct uh, direct revelation, about Gentile acceptance. And Peter was all, remember, we just read those first, we, we studied those first 10 verses. How I many know Peter was in that council too? Paul met with Peter. Peter was right there in the council, and Titus was there. How I many know Titus was not a Jew? Titus was a Greek. And Titus was not circumcised. And according to the law, an uncircumcised man couldn't even sit in the same company with a circumcised man. Y'all don't know how serious, y'all not catching how serious this thing is yet. Hallelujah. So Peter was there. So he can't claim ignorance. He was there. And they had shook hands. Remember, they, remember the scriptures that they gave Paul and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship? They had shook hands. They had decided, okay, God no respect a person. All right. So Peter can't claim ignorance. He knew what he was doing. Watch what he did. He says, but when they came, watch this. But when they will come, I'm in the middle, I'm in the middle of verse 12. Mm -hmm. But when they were come. When certain folks show up, certain people came, all of a sudden, people start acting funny. When certain people come in, now all of a sudden you can't eat pork chop. When certain people come in, now all of a sudden you pull away from them sausages. They were good before James them got before the group got there. It's like some folks, are, some folks, they'll endure your company as long as certain people ain't around. Tell the people like this. It ain't about pork chop and ham sometimes. It's about attitudes. And that's the real thing. It's the attitude. That's the main thing. If you can receive this, this ain't even about eating. Yeah, that's right. Right. It's about mind and attitude. Yeah, right. How people act funny around other folks. Yeah. 
But but then when you not but but but, but when they not around, now you ain't got no problem hanging out with me. But when your preacher friends come, now all of a sudden you got like you better than me. That's a hypocrite. Hypocrisy. Play, it's like it's like stage play, like players on a stage. That's what it is. A hypocrite. Hallelujah. You know a lot of times why these Hollywood actors have so much trouble? Because they're constantly moving in and out of character. Come on. This is why a lot of them have trouble. They have trouble in real life because they're so used to performing. Many times for, for an actor, life is just a performance. You'd be surprised at the stuff that, they, that they'll do to themselves to prepare themselves for a role in a movie. Come on, y'all. Thought about old brother Jamie Foxx when he played Ray. He played the heck out of Ray. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what Jamie did? Jamie actually wore prosthetics over his eyelids. Mm -hmm. He actually, watch this. He actually had his, he actually, he actually had his eyelids glued shut yes. for at least 10 to 12 hours every day. A lot of those things, a lot of those scenes Jamie did, he did it with his eyes glued shut. Yes. So he did it. He watch this. He took on the role of a blind man. So much so that whenever they took those prosthetics off, it took a while for him to refocus his sight. Because the reality of it is, if you sit in the dark for an extended period of time, you will go physically blind. You ever come out of a theater and on a bright day, when you come out, you come out like this. You come out looking like you smell something. <laughs> Why? Because you, that light, see? You, you, know, you know, sat in the theater, and you, you know, and when you come out in that, you got to give your eyes time, you got to give your pupils time to, you know, the, 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 the dilation, you got to give them time to, to, to retract, hallelujah, because you can't take that much light after sitting in the dark. Now, suppose you sat in the dark for days and days and days and days. I'm trying to show you something here. When they come, when they will come, what did he do? He, I mean, verse 12, the middle of 12, but when they will come, the people, the folks from James, from Jerusalem, he withdrew. True. He separated himself. He allowed that spirit of division to work through him. He is one of the main apostles. Let me tell you something about the devil. The devil don't care who he is. As a matter of fact, the higher up you are, that's when you really got to be watched. Because if I can get a high up person, I can do the most damage. So if you the pastor's got to really be, please don't put your pastor on a pedestal. I appreciate the love y'all have for me, but don't put me up young. Keep me down here so you can pray for me. Don't put my pastor on a pedestal. No, he ain't. No, I'm not. I'm not on a pedestal. I put my pants on just like you do, one leg at a time. My breath stinks in the morning. I can brush my teeth too. I have to take showers. I got to use deodorant. I got to spray cologne. Whatever I have to do, I got to do the same stuff you got to do to keep myself somewhat presentable. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Some people think they're larger than life. No, baby, you ain't all that bad right. chips. Right. But I will say this quickly. I'm gonna quickly say this. I am what I am by the grace of God. Nothing good I did. It's all about him. Any kind of goodness or character or virtue you see in this, this life, that glory got to go to him. Because I wasn't born with it. I was reborn with it. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, he withdrew himself. Peter, the, the apostle Peter, the one that walked on the water with Jesus for a while. Peter, the one who shadow healed sick folk. Peter, who preached and people got Say, Peter, who going into the gate and the beautiful man, the, the, the man sat at the gate, and Peter raised him, hallelujah. Peter, the one who raised the dead, Peter, the one who the Holy Ghost worked through, still have was dealing with prejudice. Yes. Come on. I want you to see this. As powerful as he was in the spirit, he still has some shortcomings in his mind. He still has he he, he still has some problems in his attitude. <coughs> He still had that fear working because when those people came from James, he didn't want them to see him eating with them. Come on here. That's right, brother. Some folks, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I know. 
Some folks will get funny at you when certain people come around. Yeah. Hallelujah. And some of this stuff needs to be called out. Yeah. Especially if it's done in a way that's going to cause harm on the church. You got to deal with this stuff. We got to deal with it. We can't get, you can't sweep it under the rug and act like it ain't present. That stuff got to be talked about. But wait a minute. So this is what Paul did. Paul, so watch this. Hang on now, cause, cause you know, cause now watch this. Peter's action did just affect him. Remember this: everything you do, listen to me. Everything you do has a collateral effect. Amen. Amen. It ain't gonna just affect you. It's gonna affect everybody attached to you. Watch this. Let's keep reading. Watch this. He withdrew himself and separated himself. What was that withdrawal based on? Fear. Fearing who? Yeah. Them. Don't ever let yourself be so scared of man yeah. that it causes you to act in a way that's inconsistent with who you are in Christ Jesus. I don't care who they are. Some folks get funny because the mayor show up. The sheriff come in. The police. I don't care who he is. Don't let anybody pull you out of your Christ-like character. Look at who they are. He withdrew himself and separated when they came. Peter did two things when the legalists came. Number one, he withdrew. Number two, he separated. Peter said, and, and that's, watch this. He didn't, watch this. this. I'm not talking about something verbally. He didn't say nothing, but just his act, sometimes your actions. The way you act, the way you react, speaks volumes. You'd be surprised at how loud body language is. You ain't got to say nothing. It's just how you do. Then you look like, well, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You didn't just use your mouth. You said something. Your mouth didn't do it, but your body language. When Peter withdrew to the share, his body language told them people, y'all ain't good enough to hang out with me. That's what his body language said. Because he didn't just withdraw kid, he separated. Yeah, right. Which means to make a difference. Yeah. That's wrong. That's right. yeah. he, he did. What he did, Sister Renee, is that he pulled, he, the, my notes said he, he rolled up the sail of grace yeah. and pulled the law back out. Mm -hmm. Don't ever do that. We are who we are by the grace of God. Amen. That's us. Ever think you better than anybody. I don't Amen. care. The worst drunk on the street. Hallelujah. But for the grace of God, we would be right out there. Hallelujah. I'm talking about from the guttermost to the uttermost. From the White House to the dog house. God's grace is the equal. I don't look down my nose at nobody, man. Because I know if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be right there. But there was a the time I was there. We get saved and we start walking with law, so we forget about the fact that we used to be lost. Yeah. Hallelujah. He restored me. The winder wrote the song, I used to be lost, couldn't find my way. But the Lord showed me a better way. He restored me. Say, I've been restored. Say, I've been redeemed. So my job is to tell everybody else about this redemption. Both in my both with my mouth and with my actions. Yes, sir. You can't act like you're better than people and witness to them at the same time. Right. Pete withdrew himself. The presence of these legalists, the presence of these Judaizers made him so timid. He was so intimidated, hallelujah, that he hid his faith. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. He hid his faith. I can't talk about the Lord now. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to know I'm saved. Let me tell you something. I want everybody to know I'm saved. All right. All right. I, I, hallelujah. I don't care who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. God's grace is on my life. Right. And I got faith in God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I got faith in his son, my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. He shed his life's blood for us. Yeah. How you going to be ashamed of that? He withdrew. This is interesting here. By Peter withdrawing, it means he took which means he refused to take a stand for truth. Yeah. I want you to see all this. I want you to see all this in that in that body language. And I want you to see it in our body language when we start acting funny toward people. That's right. I, want, I want us to see That's this. Right. Hallelujah. He didn't just withdraw. He separated, which means to mark off boundaries. 
to set limits. That means Peter excluded them. And really what he was really doing, watch this, y'all gonna see this, he was really cutting himself off, he didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. He was cutting himself off, and it was a good thing that Paul was there to see him. Because if Paul hadn't have corrected him, he would have wrecked the church. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Oh God, it would have it would have wrecked people's faith. These Gentiles, these people were these people were dependent on Jesus because this is what was preached to them. They were dependent on the church. How many you they ain't no hurt like church hurt? The church has hurt more people than you could imagine. Not always intending to, but still hurt is hurt. Whether it was done on purpose or not, it still hurt. I don't think it, it take a mean person. I mean, it take a person with no heart at all to intentionally hurt you. But even if it wasn't intentional, it still hurt. This is why we got to check this stuff and make sure that we were, we that we were what we supposed to be. He separated himself. Somehow mocked himself. He, he just feared, and again, he feared those which were of the circumcision. Lord have mercy. That cutting group. That cutting group. He was afraid of those legalists. He, he, he was afraid of those legalists. He, he, he removed himself. He was afraid of those, hallelujah, afraid. He was scared. That's what he was. Hallelujah. Of the circumcision group. Watch this. And then, again, here's that, watch the collateral effect. Let's go to the next verse. Watch this. Look at verse 13. What the, what, what's the first the first four words? Hold it. And the <coughs> other Jews, yeah. when they watch Peter's move, because they watch this now, Peter's a leader. He's a leader. So if anybody knows what they're doing, I know Pete got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Ooh, Pastor, you got to watch yourself, son. Because sometimes people believe stuff because Pastor said it. That's right. Oh, God. I realize, I, you don't understand the weight of this thing. I realize when I'm with this microphone in my hand, God has given me the, the power to persuade minds and shape opinions. Hallelujah. So I can't preach one thing and do something else. God, help me, Jesus, to, 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 to walk what I'm talking. We can't preach one thing and live another way. Make sure that your walk is congruent with your talk. Hallelujah. Dr. King said, some people are practical atheists. They never deny the Lord their lips, but they deny Him with their life. Your mouth saying one thing, <laughs> but your life saying something else. And the other Jews, what did they do? They dissembled. What does dissemble mean? Which means they separated too. They followed suit. They followed suit. Listen to me. Look at him. Look, look right here. I don't care who's doing it. If it's wrong, if it's wrong don't you follow suit. Right. I don't care who they are. Right. I don't care if he's the reverend doctor, whoever, bishop, right. archbishop, right. chief apostle, prelate, whatever. If he's wrong, you don't you follow him. Right. Right. If I get wrong, don't follow me. Yes. Pastor, I love you, but you're wrong. I can't follow you in that. Yes. That's why you need to do the word for yourself. That's right. What are you bringing when you come to the Bible study? You got to bring both of them when you come. Bring your brain and bring your Bible. Hallelujah. So these other Jews, they just said, they, they went right with him. They went right along with him. Now here goes the shock. Here's what got Paul. Who was Paul's traveling companion? Barnabas. Barnabas, I told you his name means son of consolation. Barnabas was the type of character that you, he, he was the type of fellow you really wanted in your life. Because Barnabas had the type of temperament, the type of spirit that he could come into a trouble, a troublesome situation and bring peace. Yeah. Barnabas' name, his name means son of consolation, or he who comforts, he who brings consolation. Ain't it good to have some folks in your life that get just their presence helps yeah. has a calming effect on yeah. you? You've a tears up in an uproar, but when certain people get around you, it helps you to calm down. Yeah. We all need a Barnabas. But what did you do when even your Barnabas, when he go to have his money? Look what the book says. Look what the word says. It says that even Barnabas, in so much, in other words, this thing was so thick, this 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 spirit of division was working so thick and so hard and so heavy that even Barnabas 
was also carried away with their King James says dissimulation. That word on the scale just simply means hypocrisy. Even Barnabas became hypocritical. All this time they were sitting there with the Jews or with the Gentiles, but when certain people showed up, Barnabas said, I guess I better separate too. I don't want them looking at me funny. You'd be surprised how people came in to pressure. Somebody say peer pressure. That's what caused a lot of people to miss the mess up. It ain't that they want to do it. It's just they came in to peer pressure. Because peer pressure is a real thing. I'm getting real. Peer pressure. Everybody else doing it. I'm going to do it to you. Everybody going to be there. I'm a witness. Everybody ain't going to be there. <laughs> and somebody ain't going to certain places. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't, I, don't, I don't look for the consensus. I love what Dr. King said. He says, a real leader don't look for consensus. He says, a true leader sets consensus. I love that. Hallelujah. Barnabas, Paul's traveling companion, my ace, my dog, not Barnabas, that's my dog. Not him. Yeah, him. The rest of the Jews played the hypocrite with Lord with Peter. And the hypocrisy of Peter and his friends even led Barnabas. Look at this. Hypocrisy is to act behind a mask. A stage player pretending to be someone he is not. Hypocrisy is pretense. Hypocrisy is an outward show of something that is not true inwardly. A lot of people, a lot of people doing that. Outwardly showing one thing, but inwardly there's something entirely different. There's a lot of hypocrites in the church. Yeah, sure it is. There's too many hypocrites in the church, but it don't do away with the real. Remember I said this, I'm gonna tell you again. Don't reject Jesus because of Judas. Judas was right there with him, wasn't he? Yeah. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. So we're going to have Judas among us. Yeah. My counsel is don't focus on Judas. Yeah. Focus right. on Jesus. That's right. That's right. You can say something. Yes, sir. I'm sitting there thinking, hmm. you know, you think about Peter. Yes. You don't heal people. That's what I'm saying. He's done all that. He's done all this stuff. Come on. And you thinking, oh, he, you know he's thinking he's right. That's right. You got it together. Then you see him separate himself. Uh-huh. I mean, that's how you can even get that's caught right. up. That's right. See, the point is, this, 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 that's the point I was trying to make. Those are the ones that the enemy is really trying to trip up. Right. Right. And you got to be really careful. Be Those of us, listen to me, babies. Those of us that have great influence, we become greater targets. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So this is why we really want to walk circumspect. Walk wisdom. Always watch what you're doing. Always right. be careful. Always be watchful. The Bible says be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, to whom resist steadfast in the faith. We've got to, we got to keep that resistance. You've got to recognize these little tactics. Yeah. These little, because, because it's so subtle that if you're not, if you're not careful, you'll, you, you'll play into it, <laughs> and, you, and you, 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 you'll jump right in there, because I, I, I had to catch myself before. You jump right in and start having a conversation, People start talking, you know, they keep on, they get in the break room and go to talking, and if you ain't careful, you jump right in there. Show me it. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, so he showed me it. Come on, kid. If you ain't careful, you'll get caught up. And I, I, I remember, I love, I love the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was in the get in there, and the Holy Ghost, I heard, nobody, nobody ever heard it, but I heard it. He said, shut up. All right. <laughs> To me, it's like somebody was behind me screaming, shut up! And I went back to my office. <laughs> <laughs> like a dog took the tail the leg, going back to your office and get some rest of Because I was getting ready, because see, see, the people that I work with, they know I'm a pastor. See? Yeah. And sometimes people are trying to yeah. yeah. They will. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they know you're a woman of faith. They know your testimony. You don't realize that people, people stalking your Facebook page right now. You don't realize that. They know your testimony, so they're going to try stuff. That's right. Oh, see, can I get a rise out of them? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you realize that on every day, your faith is on display. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So Barnabas, Barnabas got it caught up. This, their hypocrisy hmm, led others to defect from grace. People would disown the truth of grace by the behavior of their leaders. The preacher slack, the people will be slack. Hallelujah. Barnabas, as I said, hallelujah, was a colleague in ministry, a close friend of Paul. Barnabas was there. You know Barnabas was there for Paul when nobody else believed in him? Barnabas was there when, everybody, when, they, when other folks tried to kill him. Barnabas befriended him. If I, can, if I can trust anybody, if I can depend on anybody, I can, de I can depend on Barnabas. Who would have believed that Barnabas would have got caught up in Peter through hypocrisy? <coughs> so what did Paul do? Rule 14. Paul said, but when I saw it, he said, but when I saw it, he said, but when I saw it, but when I saw it, I'm going to say that for effect. But when I saw, when God showed you what you need to see, I put out a, I put a thing out the name about patience. God was speaking to me this afternoon about patience. He said, son, be patient. Because patience will force deception to reveal itself. Because any time somebody trying to deceive you, they try to put pressure on you in a quick, in a hurry, in a, in a hurry way. You got to hurt and do this. You Come on, come on, come on. That's deception. If you just be patient. Be patient. Just chill out and wait and patience will show you everything you need to see. And when patience show you, don't deny what you see. Because patience always, listen to me, patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Patience is called long suffering. Patience. It always causes the devil to show his hand. Always. You ain't got the one that he'll show you. If you be patient enough, our problem is we ain't patient. We want it to happen by tomorrow. I want it now. We got a microwave generation. I want to put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. I want to eat now. Hallelujah. We want it, dude. We want it now. We don't want no, we don't want no, we don't know nothing about delayed gratification. Hallelujah. We want it now. I want to go, you know, and, and sometimes get and some people start arguing in the microwave. God, this day taking so long. <laughs> You can manage the microwave because it ain't heating your plate up fast enough. <laughs> we would call our stores, not now, we would call our stores fast foods. <laughs> this is a place I can get a duck in. That's why they call them convenience stores. Don't take you a lot of time. Just duck in and duck out. Well, we try to treat God the same way, but I need you to understand that the kingdom of God is opposite of the kingdom of this world. You can't hurry, God. Right. I don't care what you do. You can pitch a fit. You can cry, kick, scream, hallelujah. But you can't hurry, God. Yeah. If you get through kicking and having your temper tantrum, God will say, okay, we still won't wait. Because okay. you kicking and screaming all the day. You know what that did? That showed me you ain't ready. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul said, but when I saw, verse 14, but when I saw they walk down upright, according to the what? They, they wouldn't walk, they wouldn't walk in according to grace. When Peter withdrew himself, watch this. Now here he is an apostle, supposed to be showing people the ways of God. <laughs> he, he stood for God. You, you, you the apostle. All right. You got the hand of God on your life. Who was I saying that? You got the hand of God on your life. You got to say it that way, you know. <laughs> You ever seen that guy on BET about 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> that man don't scare me so in the morning. Yes. Go to sleep, be the TV on up about 3 o'clock. And go! Look up, look around. Okay. <laughs> you got the hand of God in your life, you know, and, and you speak for God, hallelujah. And God's and God sleep at the foot of your bed, you know. And, 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 you know, I'm mean, going you know what I'm saying. But here's Pete, the apostle. Paul said, wait a minute. Y'all ain't right. Paul said, this ain't right. You hypocrites. He called them to the car. Wait a minute. You finna, you finna shipwreck people's faith. If I don't say something about this, it's gonna hurt the church. And Paul went to them. He went to them because they did it publicly. He cut them publicly. Isn't that something? Give me a... Uh, somebody turn quickly to 1 Timothy 
chapter 5. Is it verse 20? 520. Huh? 520. 520. You got your notes? Yeah. yeah, turn there. That's right. I want, I, want, I want us to see this. Now, please understand, while you're turning there, I want you to realize that the books of Timothy, 1 and 2 Timothy, and Titus, Timothy was a young pastor. Mm -hmm. Timothy was one of the young pastors. As a matter of fact, he was the first pastor of the yeah. church in Ephesus. Paul left Timothy in charge in the church of Ephesus. He was, a, he was ordained as the pastor. And 1 and 2 Timothy are the guidelines as to how church operations are supposed to go. Also, the book of Titus. Titus was a young pastor that Paul left in Crete. He was also a young pastor. So the books of 1 and 2 Timothy and the book of Titus are called pastoral epistles. You look, at, you look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, he gives you the guidelines for a bishop. He gives you the guidelines for a deacon. Hallelujah. He tells you about church officers. He talks about church mothers. He said, no mother, no mother should be in the church under the age of 60 because she ain't through running around yet. That's crazy. Ain't it? He said, don't take, don't take any, don't take any woman into the, to that place in the church who have not yet reached three score. That's 60. Because you can take that long for a person to really get their feet fully on them. So you can really help somebody else. Now there are some, don't worry about looking funny. There are some exceptions. That's not a rule of thumb. I mean, it's a rule of thumb, but it doesn't apply to everybody. But the Paul said, if you're on the safe side, make sure I ain't even supposed to be talking about that. But first, first, first Timothy 5.20, what does it say? Those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all uh -huh. the rest also may hear. All right. Paul said, those that sin, rebuke in the presence of everybody. Yeah. Oh, have mercy. What do I should we practice that in this church? Yeah. 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 Should, we do that? Should we do that in here? Yeah. <laughs> you better have to stop some stuff. <laughs> you better have to pass the stop calling some folks. Look here, come in. Sit down right here. Y'all, this brother right here. Call him to the floor. Sit down right here. Uh, get a chair. Sit down here, brother. Everybody look at him. I talked to this brother. I talked to this brother, and he still was going to straighten up. Now we follow the word. Now if we don't see the fruit of repentance in his life. He's going to be stripped because that 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 verse is talking to leaders. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's talking to leaders. Paul, Paul said, this is how you handle leaders. Yeah, right. Why? Because leaders have influence. Yeah, and if you don't deal with it, they're going to ruin a lot of people. So if they don't straighten up, put them in front of them. Come on, Amen. rebuke them before everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Why? So that, so why, why, why he said yeah. so that what they have? So that the fear, so that others may learn. So that the fear, there has to be a fear. And that word fear means reverence. We got to respect and revere the things of God. Don't you know we're dealing with holy things? You don't deal with holy things just any kind of way. We, 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 I'm talking about even with each other. You are, you're God's child. That means I don't put my mouth on you any kind of way. You're a child of God. Even if I don't agree with you, I ain't going to run you down. This is what we got to do stuff. God help us. Paul said, Timothy, the one that sin, rebuke him before everybody. Those that are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all. Talking about leaders. So that the rest may fear. None of these. Anybody, ain't nobody, none of us. Listen to me. Including this fellow holding the mic. None of us are above rebuke. That's right. Above correction. But when we do it, do it in love. Do it in love. Paul got in his face about out of time. Watch this. This is good church on him. He said, Barnabas, he said, he said, but when I saw they walk not in the truth, or right, uh, uh, not, not, they walk not up right according to the truth of the gospel. He said, I said unto Peter, where? Before what? He said, I said to Peter, before all of them. I didn't, I didn't call him in private. Now watch this. You re remember now, in the early part of the chapter, Paul met privately. Remember reading that? He said, those, those are repute, Peter, James, and John. Paul said, I didn't talk to them in front of everybody. 
because I know they had reputation. So I met with them privately. And we talked and discussed about the, about the grace of God. And, and we're not going to put them, we're not going to demand that Gentiles keep the law because we realize that we're in a new covenant now. And we all shook hands, we all agreed, and every, we, we, we established consensus. Now, here we are just a few verses later, and you're trying to undo everything we just did. We shook hands on it. <laughs> and now you're trying to undo everything we just did. I can't let this go. We just shook hands and came to an agreement. So this is what the, the, the Gentiles we do. Okay. Hallelujah. God got one covenant for everybody. I don't care who you are. Everybody got to come by way of the cross. Everybody, the, 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 I don't care if you're Jew, Gentile, male, female, white, black, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. I don't care if you I don't care if you come which side of the track you came from. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what your social economic status is. Hallelujah. The cross is the level ground. Yes. Cross is the meeting place for God and sinners. Somebody say amen. amen. But when Pete, if Paul were to let this go, Paul said, wait a minute, didn't we just shit? Didn't we just wasn't long ago we just established consensus? And here you are acting whole different. You got a whole different mindset now. Because Jacob, because this group from James doesn't come to town. I got to get in your face. And Barnabas, I'm shocked at you. Barnabas, you and I walk, man, we walk the street together. We, we sing together. We talk about the things about how you let yourself be caught up into this hypocrisy. How, Barnabas, what happened to you? Well, they were all doing it, you know, and I didn't want, I didn't want to rock the boat. Sometimes you got to turn that sucker over. Don't just rock the boat. Turn that boat over. And that's what Paul did. Paul turned the boat over. He said, oh, no. He said, y'all wrong. He said, I said to Peter before all of them, if you being a Jew, we're going to close. If you being a Jew, live after the manner of the Gentiles and not, and not as do Jews, why do you compare? In other words, Peter, here you are, Jew. All right. Before they came, you were fine eating with Gentiles. Right. Well, no problem, because you didn't give them no difference. You treated them as brothers and sisters. Now you treat them like they got lepers. Just because certain people, the Judaizers come to town, because certain people have come into the mix, all of a sudden now you have difference, you have distanced yourself, and you have made a difference, and God ain't pleased with you. It ain't right. People, what you're doing ain't right. And everybody that with you, y'all wrong too. Yeah. Barnabas, you wrong. And all of you need to repent. And tell these brothers and sisters you're sorry for, for acting like they got three eyes and two heads. All right. <laughs> you need to apologize and tell them, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I should have never withdrew myself from you. What I should have did was stay right at the table with you and told them brothers, come on over here and eat with us. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Some folk, they black sitting at the table with whites. Some of their black friends come in. All of a sudden, you're going to get up and go to the other table. The devil is alive. That's right. Some white folk do the same thing. Right. The time they white friends come in, they're going to get up because they don't want nobody to see them eating with colored That's folks. Right. That's right. Talk to me. That's wrong. That's wrong. It's hypocrisy. Yeah. And Paul called him to the carpet about it. Peter, you ain't acting right. We who are Jews... One more verse. Oh, Jesus. 733. We who are Jews by nature. <laughs> Paul said he includes himself. Because Paul is a Jew. Did you know that? He was of the tribe of Benjamin. At one time, Paul was very well versed and very well motivated by law keeping until God liberated him by his grace. He said, we, are, we, we by nature are Jews. In other words, he said, we ought to know better. Yeah. We should know better. And not sinners of Gentiles who only know what we tell them because they will not watch this. Paul, watch this. Paul was telling Peter, the Gentiles never had the law like we did. How I many of the law was never given to Gentiles? Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I know you're sleeping. I saw y'all sleeping all the time. They, they, they don't know any better. All they know is what we tell them. Yeah. But now here's the problem. We got them confused now. You know why we got them confused? Because we tell them one thing, but we 
doing something else. God, I pray New Beginnings Fellowship Church don't be guilty of that. Yes, Lord. New Beginnings, don't be guilty of that. Amen. Hey, New Beginnings, yes. don't be guilty of that. Amen. Don't be guilty of telling folks one thing, but we're doing something else. You live, you, 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 you're a child of God, live like it, walk like it, talk like it, act like it. Don't think yourself better than anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care how nasty and raggedy they are. Don't think you better than anybody. Don't change your behavior because some nasty person walked in the building. All right, all right. Change how you act because somebody who's not dressed very well. Right. Somebody who don't smell as good. Yes. Don't do that. Yes. Because you said it mixed signals. That's what yes. Paul was telling me. Yeah. Don't do that, people. Y'all wrong. Yeah. Now apologize to these people. Repent. Tell them you're yes. sorry. Yes. That's not written, but I'm sure that's what he told them. Tell these people you're sorry. Because I see you. Paul said, I see. And you, it, see, some things are some things are overt, but there's some things are covert. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Some things are just open, but there's some people are very slick, or they think they are. They're very slick. They covertly do stuff. You know, they throw the rocket and hide their hand. <laughs> you know, real covert. You know, I'm not doing it openly, but uh, you know, just covert. You know, smiling while you're doing it. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Oh, and he did let me grow. You know? <laughs> Long as I live, my trouble rides. I'm a hasten to the throne with your mean self. <laughs> and you know it. You know you ain't acting right. And thank God we got a Paul. That will stand up. Maybe the pastor need to be Paul. Yeah. And stand up in love and say, look, sister, you wrong. Right. Look, bro, that ain't right. right. <laughs> You're going to mess up a whole lot of people doing what you do. Right. We're going to, see, and I'm so glad because see, this is, I want you to get the spirit. If you get this, I'm going to be satisfied for the night. I want you to see it's a spirit behind it. It's a yeah. spirit of division. That's, yeah. that's what I want you to see. Again, this ain't even about eating food. No. It ain't about pork chop and ham hock. And, 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 and stew beef and, and that it's about a spirit that gets a hold of people and causes them to exhibit attitudes that's unbecoming a child of God and it creates division and friction in the house of God that's not the stop we can't have that among us we can't have it among us we're not public but we can deal with this stuff when it comes up we got to deal with it when it comes up we're going to deal with it I said, when he comes up, because he's going to show his head at times. Yeah, yeah. And again, you know, and watch this. It's like Barnabas. Don't be shocked who it operates through. Because right. it's going to always, listen to me, please catch this, and I'm going to be grateful that you got this. It's going to always try to operate through somebody who got the greatest level of influence. Yeah, all right, all right. That's what it's going to work through. People, who, somebody who got the power to sway mind. And persuade opinions. That's who it's going to work through. So let's watch what we do. Let's watch how we carry ourselves. Let's watch our behavior. The Bible says if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. All right. All right. I will judge me. Yes. You judge you. Yes. Hallelujah. And then together we're going to judge each other. All right. And we're going to love each other. Yes. I said we're going to love each other. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm going to love you. I'm going to get on your nerves. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, next time we're going to pick up again with verse 15. We're going to go a little further. We're going to finish this chapter. Well, I don't know. We, we'll go as far as we can. I think we're going to finish this chapter next time. Because it's going to kind of pick up a little bit. Then when we get to chapter 3, it's going to slow down again. But, but the rest of this is pretty, it's pretty quick. But I'm, I'm so glad we got to this part tonight. Because it shows us how that spirit of division tries to sneak in and create animosity and create confusion, create discord. And all it takes is a little bit. Just somebody eating pork chop and ham. Yeah. And to mess up the whole church. You would think the church would get messed up over pork chop and ham. But you'd be surprised. If the, what did Jesus say about the little foxes? They spoiled the body. It ain't big stuff. It's the little stuff. It, I mean, the big stuff is really a whole lot of little stuff. 
come together. Little stuff, little things. So we, 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 this thing is so meticulous that we've got to watch every little thing and listen to the Spirit of God. And I tell you what, let's love on each other. Let's love on one another and let's pray for each other. Please let's do that. Let's stay prayerful. Hallelujah. And let's really count as precious. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. And y'all know this. God is doing a precious thing here in the yes, yes, church. He really is. And we give him all the praise yes. for what he's doing. Yes. I'm much but I'm glad I'm here. Hallelujah. Yes. I thank God for what he's doing. Yes. And I want a whole lot more of the folks to come. Yes. Hallelujah. But I don't want us, I don't want us getting up from the table because they're coming with their poke child. All right. All right. That's right. Put that in here by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't get mad because they're coming in with bacon and eggs. All right. So now you two saying it's working with us. Hallelujah. Facebook family, God bless you all. Amen. I hope something that was said, something was said tonight that encouraged you, that strengthened your resolve. Amen. If we are justified by faith, we're not justified by works of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. That's all about now. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Again, as I prayed at the beginning, I pray the same thing even now. Lord, give us the the mind and the attitude of King David. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart so that I won't sin against you. Lord, let us put these things in our heart. Let us always be governed by the word of God and by the inclination and the leading and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us now. Because I realize, Lord, that if you don't constantly deal with us, we'll do something stupid. We'll act in a way that's not in harmony with your word. So, Lord, I thank you right now that every person in this room, Lord, every one in this room right now being touched by God. Every one of us is being touched by the Lord in our mind right now. And, Lord, I just pray those of us that are struggling in whatever area it is, hallelujah, I thank God, Lord Jesus, that you are the source of of healing and strength for that struggle. Hallelujah. God, we thank you now. Hallelujah. We're going to pray again, but Lord, I pray tonight for our children who are getting ready to to resume their studies at school. God, we pray for our children. Oh God, because prayer is so necessary because in many ways schools have become war zones. But Lord, I speak peace in the halls of Pierce County High School. I speak peace on the campus of Pierce Middle School. I see yeah. peace in the campuses of Blackshell Elementary, Patterson yeah. Elementary, yeah. Midway School. I hear, Lord, we just see peace, God. Hallelujah. I pray for every educator. I pray for our teachers, Lord. God, give them wisdom, Lord. Give them, a, give them wisdom to know how to deal with our children. Hallelujah. We pray for the administrators, Lord. The principals and assistant principals. We pray, God, for football coaches and basketball coaches and and we'll track, track and field, whatever, whatever, whatever level of administration it is, God, we pray for the entire school system. Pray for the Board of Education. We pray for the superintendent of schools. God, we just pray and we ask you for divine intervention. Let, let this school year of 23 and 24 be the most productive school year that we have ever had in this school system. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Now, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you're sending angels to walk these halls. Yeah. The angels of the Lord right now are being camped around about those that fear God. Because I know there's some educators in our school system who are God-fearing. Yeah. And, Lord, I pray for them, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let them make a positive difference in the lives of our children. Yeah. Do it for us, Lord, and we're going to be careful to give you all the praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody standing now, if you will. Hallelujah. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me speak this declaration over you right now. Hallelujah. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. And I say may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. May it rest, rule, and abide with you, his people, henceforth, now, and forevermore. May the peace of God that passes understanding, may it superintend, hallelujah, your home. May your homes be filled with the presence and with the peace of God. Hallelujah. May everybody that enter into your house feel the presence of God. May they sense his peace right now. Hallelujah. I pray for your families. Hallelujah. I pray for your children. I pray for your nieces and nephews. I pray for everything concerning you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that every home that is represented in this house, let every home be a little touch of heaven on earth. And God, I decree that now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you as you travel back to your homes. May the Lord send a special garrison of warring angels to go down the road before you, removing every incident, removing every accident. May all the animals stay on the other shoulder of the road. May the other drivers stay in their lane. May God give you safe arrival home. Hallelujah. That's my prayer for you tonight in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.